Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago. As I said before the break, I would have asked you guys a question. Do you think that um, we saw some harassment of immigrants or do you think that police were do, just doing their jobs? And from the responses that you guys gave, we see that most of you are saying that the police are indeed doing their jobs to ensure that the immigrants that are here are contributing to the economy and are here legally. So thank you for your response. As we move forward this morning, we are talking to... Paul Richards, Independent Senator. Good morning, Mr. Richards, and welcome to our plat and welcome to Good Morning Tobago. Thank you for having me. Good morning. It's a pleasure having you. So you are chairing the um, Joint Select Committee on Social Services and Public Administration. Yes, I am. Yes, uh, and, and we're very really happy to be able to be on your uh, channel this morning to talk about our fifth town hall meeting, uh, which is coming up this coming Thursday, 13th June, uh, and it's going to be held at the Shaw Park Complex, Old Government Road in Scarborough, from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. So thank you for having us uh, to be able to talk about it and invite Tobagonians to be a part of this town hall meeting. Excellent. And tell us what are some of the key topics that will be brought forward in this town hall meeting on Tuesday. Well, the committee decided to look at the issues related to non-communicable diseases and more specifically diabetes, cardiological diseases and cancer and their prevalence in Trinidad and Tobago and the ability of our regional health authorities and the healthcare system in general to deal with and to provide services to the population of Trinidad and Tobago. We're also looking at how people are interfacing with the system in terms of how they're getting CDAP medications, medications under the CDAP program, which has been in the news a lot recently with the uh, comments from the Minister of Finance during the, the, the joint, the, the public uh, focus or the, the Parliament's focus, I should say, on the media review. And also how the, the public is dealing with the outpatient clinics and their overall interface with the public health care system. Uh, we thought this was important because NCDs are uh, contributing to the largest number of mortalities in Trinidad and Tobago, as a matter of fact, around the world. So it's an issue that is of great public concern. And we, uh, in this fifth town hall meeting, are looking to get how Tobagonians are feeling about what their experiences have been with the public health care system. We started in, in Port of Spain at the Parliament building. We went to San Fernando, City Hall in San Fernando. We also went to Chaguanas. We went to Arima in our last one. And this one, of course, we could never leave out Tobago. So we're very eager to hear what Tobagonians are thinking about how they're experiencing their interface to the public health care system. Excellent. And there are members of the public who would say that we've been to numerous uh, town halls, we've spoken, we've said all that we can say, but yet we have not seen the type of change that we want to see. What can you say to these persons that are a bit disenchanted with the current healthcare system? And, and, and they have a point. We can't minimize their experiences at all. And that's some of the feedback we got at the previous four town hall meetings that, well, We've constantly uh, outlined our concerns, the shortcomings of this system. But what our intention is as a committee is to compile a report at the end of these interfaces with the public, because we feel the interfaces with the public are the, our ability to get the, directly from the public how they've been feeling and what their interfaces and what their challenges are. And it's important to get the public view, although I understand the sentiment that they may be dis, uh, disenchanted and what's going to come out of this, because we always have a lot of talk in Trinidad Tobago, but it is our hope that at the end of this, what we will do is create a report that will be laid in Parliament. And the relevant minister, in this case, the Minister of, of Health, will have an opportunity to respond uh, after liaison with the RHAs and the other players in the healthcare system to say what they acknowledge as legitimate problems and how they intend to remedy these problems. And the, the, the committee also has the ability in six months or a year or in, in any uh, time frame that we so choose to call back the ministry officials and say, what have you done about these issues that have been raised in this report? Excellent. And what about topics related to the mortality rate of um, baby within the neonatal care system? Have well, these topics come up and how are you guys dealing with these type of this topics? Is, this is a very important topic. Of course, it's been in the public domain a lot, but it's not the remit of this particular inquiry. So each committee decides on its, its uh, inquiries for the year. And this one specifically is dealing with the issues related to NCDs, non-communicable diseases, 
uh, including diabetes, cardiological diseases, cancer, uh, the CEDAR program, and outpatient clinics. But of course, it also includes their interface with the overall public health care system so that if there is an issue that has arisen with someone who uh, had an issue in there in terms of their pregnancy and delivery and care thereafter, I'm sure they, they can raise it and will be included under the general interface with the health care system in this committee. Okay, and what about the technological advancement in healthcare? What are the topics surrounding this in, that you guys are going to be looking at as it relates to NCDs? Well, uh, the let me just uh, let me just correct it. The, the venue is the Scarborough Library. Let me just make a correction. The Scarborough Library is the venue this coming Thursday. In terms of technological advances, a lot has come up. There have been some positive bits of feedback because people have indicated that, well, the screenings they got for cancer, for heart disease, have worked and prevented them from becoming more ill and, and, and contributed to the remediation of their illnesses. But in some instances, people have also indicated that they've had long waits to get the screenings, equipment is not working, uh, the issues with file placement and, 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 and patients' files and documentation and records at the hospital. So it's been a mis mixed bag. While there have been some indications of positive interfaces with technology and the equipment being used and the medications they've been able to get access to, there's also been a lot of commentary about the shortcomings of the system. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back right after this. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago. If you're just joining us, we have been chatting with Dr. Richards, um, Dr. Paul Richards, who is an independent senator. And we're talking about that town hall meeting that's going to be happening at the Scarborough Library on Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the regional health care and we're talking about non-communicable diseases, so you can come out and talk a bit about your experience with public health care. Now, um, Dr. Richards, are there any specific groups that you guys would like to attend the town hall meeting? Are there any specific groups of individuals that you want to hear from? It's a good question. Well, it's open to the general public. But if there are groups that support uh, persons with disabilities, uh, groups that, that, that NGOs that, that deal with uh, cancer patients, with healthcare in general, with, with issues related to mental health care in Tobago, any NGO is welcome, any member of the public in Tobago is, is welcome. Even if you are a visitor to Tobago, uh, you're welcome at this public consultation this coming Thursday at the Scarborough Library. And of course, no one really needs an, uh, an excuse to come to Tobago. Tobago is such a beautiful island. So we're looking forward to coming and being a part of Tobago and hearing what Tobago has to say about their interfaces with the public health care system. I, and I think it's very important that we, the, the Parliament of Trinidad Tobago has made that decision to go out and get the views of the public. And I know you would have covered earlier on. Sometimes the public gets jaded. They make their recommendations. They make their comments about, the, about several issues in society. And they don't think that they get the kind of redress they need. But the only way to keep uh, making sure that the decision makers hear their voices is to take take uh, a veil of these type of, of types of opportunities. It's, it's usually broadcast live. And, and it's available on the Parliament channel. And if you'd like more information, you can call 624-7275. That's 624-7275. Persons are also available, uh, are able, sorry, to send questions if they can't attend in persons to the Parliament at uh, JSC, SPA at parliament.org. That is, let me just make sure I get that correct. JSC. SSPA, JSC, SSPA at parliament.org. You can send an email with your question or comment, and we, we include those questions and comments if you can't attend in person uh, to, the, to, to the, the, the general uh, panel that's there in terms of their understanding of your issues, how you've dealt, how you're dealing with the healthcare system, because we think it's very important. It was very important to come to Tobago because Tobago has a different environment and may have a different experience with the healthcare system and interfacing with that in Tobago. Uh, medical healthcare professionals are also welcome. Uh, anyone who would have interfaced with the public healthcare system is welcome to the town hall meeting this coming Thursday at the uh, Scarborough Library. It starts at 4.30, by the way. 
Excellent. And what about situations that Tobagonians often encounter whereby they, you touched on it a bit earlier, where they have to travel to Trinidad to get much needed medical attention, whether it be for um, cancer care patients in oncology. What type of um, policies can we possibly see coming out from the parliament after they have given their feedback in these type of sessions? Well, a good question, because very often persons in Tobago have to travel to Trinidad to receive health care in, in certain circumstances. The, the committee's remit is not to identify the policy. The committee's remit is to, to give the public a chance to say what the issues are. And in those cases, one would imagine that because you're coming from Tobago, you may want some sort of arrangement to be made where you are seen because you, you don't have the ability in some cases to go back home on the same day and you may have to spend all day at the public health care facility. So I think it's a very good point that you raised there for persons who are coming from Tobago to be able to identify that particular circumstance so that the, the response from the Minister of Health or the regional health authorities can address that particular issue because it is an important issue for persons who are traveling from Tobago to Trinidad to receive health care. And we'll, of course, include it in our recommendations at the end of the report coming out of these public consultations. Okay, but outside of the public consultation and the town hall meeting, there's a, there's a lot of work that you have been doing in diabetes and diabetic care. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, we've had uh, the Diabetes Association and the Cancer Society come before the, um, the committee uh, a couple of weeks ago and, and speak from their perspective, their membership, how they have felt the public health care system is dealing with those very important NCD issues. And because they, their membership will give them feedback. So dealing with the NGOs that, that, that uh, provide support to persons who may have had cardiological issues, uh, the, the Trent and Bigger Heart Foundation, the Cancer Society, Diabetes Association, and their leaderships has been very instrumental or instructive for us in terms of including their information in our final report and getting responses from the relevant authorities. Do you want to share any of those um, of the key comments that you've seen come forward uh, during well, these consultations? Uh, generally, the comments, while we've had positive responses, there have also been the issues of the wait times hmm. that patients have to endure. Sometimes the issues of uh, how their records, their medical records are stored and accessed. Sometimes their accessibility, the accessibility to CDAP covered drugs and whether they are available or whether they've run out or not. Sometimes people get appointments in the public health system that are, I consider ridiculous because if you have a heart complaint and you get a, an appointment for a follow-up visit that is six months or a year down the road, your, your condition may deteriorate. So those issues have come up over and over again and of course will be included in our report uh, to, the, to the parliament, which will get to the desk of the ministry or the relevant authorities and hopefully uh, positive responses in, in terms of how the state intends to respond to those challenges will come out of the issue and the exercise. Can you reiterate to the public how similar consultations in the past has contributed to positive uh, policy change and how this particular consultation would also do the same for them? Well, for example, we had a consultation on elderly care centers in Trinidad and Tobago. And the responses we had, and we were able to also go out to visit a few elderly care, healthcare, uh, uh, elderly care centers. And coming out of the, the issues that were raised and highlighted, a stronger regulatory framework was put in place for better care and, and supervision of elderly care persons. We also recently did one on early childhood care centers in Trinidad and Tobago, both public and private. And coming out of those, the Ministry of Education was able to see some of the challenges that are uh, happening at those early childhood care centers in terms of closing gaps. So there are positives that come out of it. In this case, the Ministry of Health and the Regional Health Authorities will be held accountable by the committee uh, for the issues raised by the public who attend and who send in also their experiences via email and via uh, hard copy. Uh, and those are the highlighted during the town hall meeting. So it's a very important exercise in getting directly from the public what the experiences have been to collate this report uh, because it tells the public side of the story about how they feel about how they're being treated and how the services are being provided and if in their opinion the services are being provided at the correct level of professionalism etc 
Okay, and in here in Tobago, one of the topics regarding healthcare that has continued to come up over the past um, couple of weeks has to do with the 24-hour opening of the Roxborough Hospital. If comments are made on this particular issue, what can be done from the parliamentary level? Well, the parliament has a particular role. The committees in the parliament, our role is to collect the information and pass it on to the relevant authorities, in this case, the Ministry of Health. So if the data, it, and this is just a, 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 an example of, of what if, um, because I can't comment on what the ministry's response will be. That's, that's up to the Ministry of Response. For example, if the data um, supplied suggests that, well, the enough people need the services overnight or on a 24-hour basis because people can get in at any time, my presumption is the ministry should respond to that and, uh, and provide an explanation as to if it will be extended to 24-hour service, and if not, why not? And if it is not done so, what measures are going to be put in place for persons who are ill when the, the institution is not officially open? So I think those are the kinds of things that can come out of this because the, the committee can hold the ministry accountable for the responses that the public gives us in terms of whether or not they feel they're getting the adequate level of service on a 24-hour basis. Okay, and well, this is an excellent initiative to be able to get that feedback from the public, uh, especially seeing that uh, over time persons are losing their confidence in the healthcare system. Now, this information is extremely important as the parliament uses it to make recommendations to the Ministry of Health um, for policy changes. Um, as we encourage people to come out, um, can you let them know why it's really important to be a part of this initiative on Thursday? It's very important to come out this coming Thursday to the Scarborough Library. It starts at 4.30 because this is a chance where you get to directly interface with parliamentarians who are on this committee, the Joint Select Committee on Social Services and Public Administration, because the inquiry is aimed at improving the service to you in the healthcare sector, in getting your voice to be heard, because you are the end uses of the system and your voices and experiences should be directing policy changes and mechanisms to improve the services to the people of Toronto because at the end of the day it's your taxpayers dollars that are, that are being uh, used to provide the service and the service should come up to the standard that you expect should be provided so it's very important that we hear your voices and we're looking forward to you coming to the the, the library uh, this coming Thursday and talking to us and telling us what your experiences have been particularly in relation to NCDs, the CDAP program, and the general healthcare provision in Tobago. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Richards. We want to thank you so much for coming on and giving us the time and letting Tobago know that their voice is Im indeed important and necessary in the conversation regarding healthcare and improving public health, especially where non-communicable diseases are concerned. We also want to thank you for all the work that you have been doing and that you continue to do and for choosing Tobago updates this morning. Guys, we want to thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back right thank after you, this. Bobby.